Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. We got a fun one for you today. We're going to show you how to create this full width, automated and animated blog slider. Really easy to do. So let's get started. One thing you want to remember about this is you've got to have some blogs created first. For anybody that doesn't know, take a look at our playlist down below, Divi for Beginners. We show you how to create blogs and how to customize them. Anybody that doesn't know, go down to your dashboard. There you'll find posts. You can add a new post to them here. You can put them in various different categories if you create categories and things like that. Like I say, if you're not sure, have a look at our previous videos. Great. So let's get started on this. Really easy to do. I'm going to enable the visual builder. Once enabled, I'm going to go down. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to make it a regular section. I'll come back to it in a moment. Let's just delete our top section here. Okay, here's the new section that we've got going here. I'm going to use a single column, single row for mine. If we roll down, I'm going to use the post slider to do this. We did this when we created a, a latest post for our blog page earlier on, but we didn't have an automated slider like this one. So when it first pops up, it's going to put something in there just like that. You can choose how many posts you want to actually show. I've only got about six or seven on this site, so I'm going to show pretty much all of them. Down below, choose the categories that you want to show. And again, for anybody that doesn't know what these are, have a look back at our previous videos. You can find out how to do that there. Great. Once you added the categories that you want to add, you can decide whether audit by date, new to old, old to new, title A to Z, Z to A, or random order. I'm usually quite happy with mine being date, new to old. Below that, we've got the read more button here. You can change that to say anything you want. I'm usually quite happy with read more, but like I say, change it to what works for you. You can decide whether to show an excerpt. This is this little bit of text that shows up here. Or if you want to, you can show the whole content, but that's going to make it go a little bit crazy. That's way too much for me. Let's put it back to how it was. Show excerpt. And we'll roll back up there. You can change the length of it. At the moment, it's set to 270 characters. If I change that to 150, It's a little bit shorter there. If you don't like what you've done, you can always go back, delete it. It'll go back to the default for you. If you want to, you can offset your post. For instance, if you don't want to show the latest, offset it to one, it'll show the next one. Offset it to three. You'll have three posts that it won't show, and then it'll show the next one. Down below that, we've got our elements. There's arrows either side. There's controls or dot navigation down the bottom there. There's a read more button. There's metadata, which is the name, the date, and the actual categories are in. And you can choose whether to show these by turning them on or off right there. At the moment, we're using the featured image of the blog for the background. You can change it. You can have it on the left. Obviously, you can change the background color. Right. Move this out of the way a little bit. Top. Or you can stack it the other way around if you want to by having it on the bottom. I like mine to use the featured image for the background. Anybody doesn't know what a featured image is. If I go to one of these blogs and hit the edit... And before you go using the Divi Builder, it's over here on the right hand side. You've got some various tabs over here. There's your excerpt if you want to use the excerpt. Featured image is right here. And that's where we put the featured image. And that's what you're seeing 
in the background in this particular example. I'm not going to use a link on these because they're linking to the individual blog posts themselves, so I'm happy with that. Don't need a background because, again, we're using the featured image for the background. Great. Well, there's not much I want to do more there design-wise. But, like I say, I'd like to have this full, full width of the screen and make it fill up from the top to the section below. And that couldn't be easier to do. I'm going to go into the row itself, the green tab. And you could use a full width section to do this if you wanted to, but you're limited with what you can put in those. I always like to show how to make a regular row in the full width. So go into your row, go to design, sizing. Here's width right here, drag that up to 100%. Copy the 100%, control C, paste it in the max width below, control V, or you can just type that 100% in there, however you like to do it. We've now got a full width blog slider right there, just what I wanted. But we've got these gaps, top and bottom. If we close up sizing here, that is spacing, padding top and bottom on both the row and the section, easy to get rid of. Let's go into the padding top. I'm going to put a zero there. I'm going to hit the chain, get the other side. We've taken the padding away from the row now. We need to do exactly the same for the section. And we'll have this thing butted up against the top and the bottom there. So blue tab for the section, green tab for the row, dark tab for a module. Going to go into the section now, do exactly the same thing. Spacing. Put a zero in there. Hit the chain. Fantastic. This is touching the bottom of our nav bar up there and the bottom of our little blog post section down below there. Great. But we want to animate this thing. I want it to roll around every few seconds and show the next one and the next one and the next one. And again, that couldn't be easier. If we roll over, hit the little dark tab, the cog, go back into our slider modules here. If we go over to our design, I'm going to skip overlay, navigation, image. If you want to, you can put in an overlay. You can change the color of the navigation arrows and dots down here. I'm happy with the way they are. You can make your image have borders and things like that. I really don't need any of this today. I'm not going to change the text out. You can have any text font you want. As with most things Divi, if you go to the title text or body text, you can choose any font you want. And there's a crazy amount. There really are. Just roll over one to audition it. But like I say, today I'm leaving that all just as it is. The only thing I'm going to do this to, to this today is go all the way down to the bottom. There we're going to find animation. Now this animation style here will not animate the slider to go between blog posts. It'll actually animate it when it loads the page. For instance, if I click on fade, you'll see that fade in. If I hit slide, slide in, etc. They got some crazy ones there. <laughs> I'm not too interested in having those today. So I'm going to flip mine back to none, but they're great for certain things. What we want today is the automatic animation. So I'm going to flip this from off to on. And by default, it makes it animate every seven seconds or 7,000 milliseconds. I'm going to change mine to five so you don't have to wait quite so long. And you can choose to continue automatic slide on hover. If you turn this to off, if they put their mouse on it, it'll continue to slide to the next one every five seconds. I like to leave that on so that they can pause it, read what it says, look at the picture, and decide whether they want to go to the read more or more info button in this case. Once we've done that, we should be good to go. Let's save our changes here. We'll save the page changes. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. And if we wait five seconds, it should roll on to the next one. Another five seconds, it's going to roll on to the next one. And of course, you can stop it by putting your mouse over it. You can go left or right with the little arrows. You can do the same thing with the pagination if you want to. You can click on the post that you want. Hit the More Info button. And it'll take you to that particular blog post, obviously. Really nice feature. 
And of course, it looks good at the top of your blog like that. And it'll be responsive on tablet and mobile also. So there's how to create a full width animated blog post slider. Really nice little feature to have on your site, really easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, bring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.